I first introduced to the ZT hook tyre uh, by some uh, colleagues and uh, I was intrigued to see what was happening. I was shown one and I liked the way that the knot was tied starting from the top of the spade and working down. Uh, my father always said that was the correct way to tie hook but I could never actually do that by hand. So I actually bought one from Dennis and I didn't have a clue how to use it. So a phone call to Dennis and he talked me through the motions of using it uh, for my pole fishing and short hook lengths there, and I was absolutely sold on the idea. And then I started messing around thinking more of my feeder commitments and everything like that and it started off with this one and using this small hand wheel to try and get up to 50 centimetres or a metre of line onto it it was an absolute nightmare, ended up with tangles and everything like that. So I sat there and I thought, how can I get a feeder attachment to be made that will work, but it's so efficient and ties the right knot? And that's when I sat there, continually talking to Dennis, I came up with the idea of the EVA spool. Back in 2011, EVA spools was hardly ever heard of. And I used to do a bit of sea fishing and I used to keep some of my sea fishing rigs on the old uh, EVA spools and I started using them for hook lengths and now everybody uses them now. So what we've got now is a full spool system that you can just load up as, with whatever hooks you want, just like doing them by hand but with the precision of the hook tyre. As we all know feeder fishing has been taken to an absolute new level. I was a very young boy when the first feeder revolution hit the River Trent and the River Severn with lots of chub and barble. And to be involved in the second revolution of feeder fishing, is, I'm quite proud of, uh, of what I've done uh, in this time. But things have moved on. Technology is, is absolute necessary now in all walks of fishing. But especially in feeder fishing as well. The, the days of taking a spooler line and a packet of hooks to your peg have totally gone. The more time you, you spend in the water and less time tying hooks and that. So you have to be prepared. It's at a new level. Fishing is at a new level now. And some people don't like it, but to, to be at the sport at the highest level, you have to be prepared, which means spending quite a few hours at home, tying hooks, making rigs, links, everything like that to be the pinnacle of your sport. So how do you tie a hook using the new feeder attachment? It comes with some of these EVA spools and they're really easily fitted onto the specially adapted feeder, feeder spool. And then you've got an index wheel, which I'll show you when we do a close up of how that works. We've had to work out how much line goes onto the spool in regards to the length of your hook length. Uh, in World Championship conditions, there's a minimum of 50 centimetres hook length. Uh, so we've worked out how many rotations plus the line that it takes to go round the actual machine. And we've come up with a permutation that is so easy to follow and so easy to use. But first of all, I'll just show you how easy it is to tie a hook. So a lot of the times people ask about the ZT, what kind of line. I use fluorocarbon, just normal monofilament. The easiest thing to do, I'll use some fluorocarbon. So that is 015. First thing to do is tie your overhand loop, however you want to tie it. I tie it by hand. That's that. Then a spool of line just goes into it, just keeps it nice, nice and simple, just so your line doesn't start rolling around everywhere like that and then we'll go for a hook. I'll go for one of my favourite feeder hooks seeing as I'm using 015 I think I'm in Ireland so I'm going to use an absolute classic feeder hook for Ireland which is a, a B512, one of my favourite patterns of hook. So I just draw the arm back, open the vise Put the hook in. I can just see the point of the hook just there. That gives me plenty of uh, shank to whip down, which is really, really important. If it goes too much in you, you run out, you run out of shank. And I like quite a few whippings on, uh, on my hooks. So there we go. Now 
the start of this here, we get some pins. This is, goes in where the letter A is, because that is the start of our that's the start of our preparation for the hook tie. So we've got the the loop on the end. I just have to bite the and that's your starting point. So we just hook that over the top and we press that right the way in. Now as you see that's nice and flat. It's not going to catch any of the line that we're going to be winding on. It's not sharp so it's not going to damage hook length. With the line that it takes to wrap around the actual hook tire and to pull the loop through, two rotations of this is going to be 50 centimetres, which is the minimum length for when you're fishing in the World Championships. So that's a really handy uh, starting point. So we've got the rotations on the spool. We know that when the knot is finished and tied, it's going to be 50 centimetres. What I like to do myself is to wet the shank of the hook. That's where the whippings are going. I know a lot of people wet the knot just as you tie it but I like to just give myself a little bit more which means just wetting the shank of the hook so just like the normal gizmo hook tire you start off there and the line catches up to itself at the top of the spade now if you notice I just like to hold it just at a slightly acute angle so that makes sure that the the line is up to the spade I want to know it's on the spade I just position my hand a little bit further down. Now the secret here is not to put too much tension on this piece of line because if you keep that really taut the whippings go on really tight which isn't good for any kind of hook tire. So I like to just keep it nice and loose just a tiny bit of strain on it and then you just work down just work it down as you can see there's a counterbalance on here as well, which makes the whole system nice and easy to use. It's very effortless to use. So when I get to what I think is the right required amount of whippings, just lift up the pin and that's it, that's trapped. Now you've got both hands, you've got the hook tire, the hook in the jaws. I like to snip that right the way down at the bottom there because the when you press the button to release the loop that's gonna tie up, you don't want to get it caught in the actual off cut line. Then first, again, I've already wet the hook. Now I'm going to wet the whippings, but not just the whippings. I like to wet the line that's going through as well. So I just wet all of that that's going down there. So when the line comes through, it's all lubricated. So if I just put that up to there, like that, and I just nice and easily just tie it in that up. Absolutely perfect. So, and just snip off this there, like that. Then, go through the same process, tie another loop of line, just like that. Wipe the excess off. And then when that lands on the when that lands on the spool, that's landed on point B. So that becomes your point A. So my index wheel is still on naught. Now I want to do another 50 centimeter hook length. So I do two full rotations again because my hook is on B. So that's my starting point. There's one rotation, and then the second rotation, and then every point on the index wheel is one centimeter. So I'm going to go to number two again, take a bit of spare line off, just chop that, just leave that like that. Another hook, one of my, as I said before, one of my Irish favorites. Everything's the same, the same process all the time. It gets really, really easy. Again, just wet. I'm a big believer in wetting the shank of the hook. So the counterbalance makes it so easy. I'm just holding that, just, just teasing it down the shank like that. The same again, the process is the same all the time. And like I say, 
That's two hooks done within a minute. That's in front of the camera. When you're at home, you do them a lot more quicker, but the process, you do one process to tie all your hooks instead of tying your hook, measuring it off, putting it on the spool, tying your hook. This process is just so, so effortless. If you fancy getting hold of one of the EVA uh, feeder attachments and the case, which holds 24 of the EVA spools and a nice lockable case, they're both £35 and available from the Gizmo website, which is just here.